Hello and welcome to my channel. Ah uh, yeah, it has been a hot minute before I made my last video. Since the holidays, I just feel like I have been too fried to remember to actually hit record anytime I did draw, which is just great. Plus, I weirdly have a harder time remembering to hit uh, screen record when drawing digitally on PC. I blame Procreate for making me always assume I have a recording. Also, though, I um, maybe just have been playing way too much Genshin and collecting <sighs> all the Asbandos. Anyway, uh, let's let's get into the actual video content of drawing. So I finally managed to sit down and record a time lapse of one of my drawings. Today is just a sketchbook drawing of my OC cooking in a kitchen. The drawing composition came from an unsplash image, which I hope I'll remember to link down below. But I think I just literally typed in Google uh, into Google person cooking and the unsplash one came up, which is perfect because those are usually royalty free. I uh, changed some stuff uh, up since it was, looked more like bland, generic magazine ready kind of kitchen look and very so I kind of wanted to give my own spin on it, obviously, and not just like complete copy paste identical uh, drawing and yeah, and obviously include my character. The sketchbook I'm using is the Ohuhu Square Mixed Media one, which is, so far is my favorite mixed media sketchbook, by the way. If you are looking for a cheaper option for mixed media sketchbooks, I highly recommend it. I think I paid about $30 Canadian on Amazon. It has a lot more pages than the more expensive uh, brands that I have bought in the past, which is great so again a uh, big bang for your buck kind of thing um when i do a sketchbook tour i'll i suppose i'll do a more in-depth comparison uh i did the actual sketch off camera since i wasn't sure how it was going to go plus i sketch fairly lightly so the camera probably wouldn't pick that up i am using a sakura plastic nib dark navy color to outline the drawing. I recently bought a pack of these to try since it's supposed to vary in line weight, which it does. Um, plus I wanted some color vi variety for at least my just felt tip liners. Um, I wouldn't actually say this nib is qu much of a good quality because within a week the purple one I already kind of destroyed <laughs> and I'm pretty lightweight when I'm, I'm drawing and using pens and stuff like that so if you're having to be heavy handed I highly don't recommend these at all. Um, <laughs> I feel like you'd probably go through them very quickly and um, annihilate the nibs. I, I feel like Sakura nibs are, are, are always kind of sketchy, the plastic ones and even the the other regular felt tip ones can get kind of destroyed easily in my opinion and so I usually try to stick with other brands but hey um, uh, I really like the quality of the ink itself though so it's probably why I just keep going back to the Sakura ones. I think there's like a the sets where they have like the black uh, when the pens are black not the beige color usually feel like they're a better quality and I don't feel like I ever pay more for them either so that's that's the weird thing, I guess, with the curb pens. Uh, what is everybody else's thoughts? Do you also struggle and get uh, have the Sakura pens often uh, get wrecked for you as well because <laughs> um, for me I, I find the quality can be very hit or miss with them. Now on to the watercolor process. So if you're anything like me, you aren't very confident on dumping the darkest colors right away on an image. I did have some pre-planning in mind and what kind of colors I wanted to do and it kind of just wanted a very cozy look, but still, I always go for the lightest washes so you're not really blind if it's not really coming up. But I realized this worked in my favor because this paper is actually, um, not that heavyweight so it will kind of curl and buckle a little 
uh, and warp and the edges would curl because they're not taped down right now. So uh, I end up actually uh, taping down the edges after the first layer dries. I enjoy having a base color wash layer to give the image, I guess, a more cohesive color palette to start as that was for a long time another struggle for more mundane scenes for me. Like when you want to limit your palette, but then you have a tomato, a lemon, and a whole bunch of other elements that say are usually more recognized by their color, but you still want like every single one of them in your page, but it feels like it would be like a lot of different colors. Um, to, to focus on and maybe ruin the mood of a piece but and so this because like watercolors are transparent it's really nice because then you have to uh, you kind of are layering it and there's like that that under color coming out uh, coming through and forward so that is kind of the main reason why I sometimes just enjoy doing it that way I suppose it would benefit to leave a certain parts white <laughs> before you, you do this and um, like for example the pot it's definitely not shiny but then i didn't really want the pot to be uh, the focal point and you know i wasn't really sure where the white highlights would be on, on uh their character themselves like i think it would be just like too bright to leave too much of like uh white shines all over them like their face was kind of like small in this <laughs> image so i kept it all like mostly colored and i guess the brightest area you would be around the cutting board where i didn't apply it as much color <laughs> so that was kind of uh, this is kind of my thought process when I'm um, working on uh, <laughs> the w my watercolor images often. Um, so I started on uh, the red ele elements, and I wanted to make like a spilling out sauce from the large pot except um after i started with a red i thought it was maybe looking a bit gory i don't know like immediately something pouring out in red <laughs> just that's i guess where my brain goes so i started panicking um and started throwing in a whole bunch of colors in there like some uh, more warm yellow and even greens or something just to uh, to look like elements <laughs> of some kind of sauce uh, it's probably me overthinking it and maybe painting too many of like I guess darker scenes and I automatically think things like that which is terrible um, so yeah I think I kind of fixed it in the end everything kind of comes together so yeah if I just put some ideas into people's heads on uh, not being able to unsee that though great Okay, I kind of have to go on a rant about the tape. I actually found it in a paint store, like the wall painting kind uh, of paint store, not an art store. It's the same brand as the masking tape um, I can find, like the wide version in art stores. So it kind of drove me crazy that I something that's like so tiny and ideal for artists was just um, hidden away in more of a painter's, you know, wall painter's t type of deal. because. I don't know how like how much use actual wall painters get out of this tape does, because it's so thin. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I was very excited when I did find this roll and it's kind of a lifesaver for like small sketchbook stuff like this because here in Canada washi tape can be very pricey and you get so little per roll so I never really find it to be very useful to use it because it would cost quite a bit to go through it all versus this one it has I, I don't actually know how much but it has a lot like you can see you get a lot more bang for your buck and it wasn't expensive so it's fairly uh, great it's it kind of will slightly rip up this paper um, it, you just have to be a little bit more gentle I guess because that's the nature of mixed media sketchbook paper it will get torn up probably by any kind I think even washi tape has ripped up um, mixed media paper for me from most cases maybe I'm not gentle enough and I don't wait for it to dry um, the impatience of myself as per usual so yeah <laughs>
So getting into the details of the actual uh, shirt for some reason was one of the most fun uh, parts to this. Sorry for any slightly blurring footage. I think it starts focusing a little bit on the tip of uh, my brush and I always forget to lock the focus of my camera so apologies if that's actually happened more frequently than, than uh, not. Um, yeah, I really wanted to do a little bit more fun design to the shirt because sometimes I feel like when I'm creating things for my imagination, they sort of like lack any details and kind of bland. Like all of a sudden I forget like the details as if I, I don't feel like I dress without accessories or and I usually like very detailed patterned uh, clothing myself and I do enjoy seeing it on others as well. So <laughs> when I'm just making things up, I feel like I just forget uh, um, the existence of details and it, it just like it complete my brain goes completely blank I remember I was discussing this with um, a bunch of fellow uh, artists uh, and we were joking around how you just you start drawing something as simple as like even an umbrella and you just forget what an umbrella even looks like <laughs> it's like how many uh, how many uh, you know sizes does it have what's the actual shape <laughs> what does it look like open closed or mid uh mid open right um <laughs> it's just very uh, maybe it's because like you put your brain on the spot so it, you know it gets all panicked <laughs> And lighting change. So I finished up the initial colors and layers and decided I would continue after lunch. I sort of like looking at the artwork with a fresh pair of eyes to get a better sense of what needs more contrast and what to layer up and any additional details at that point. Also, because of the terrible evening lighting I have set up, you can kind of just see how much the, this paper itself warps, if that kind of bothers you. I would say that the camera shadow just intensifies it though, so it's not as bad as it seems. Um, it, like, if you shine a light directly on it, it, you don't notice it as much, and daylight as well won't pick up on um, the warpage of the paper as much, but I thought it would be just nice to know if anybody was interested about uh, this particular sketchbook and just how much it warps, seeing as it is like a cheaper alternative. I also will say that um, the paper itself feels a lot softer than most mixed media papers and it still has tooth to it, but it's not too intense tooth either. So it's kind of just the right amount. So it's not, I wouldn't call it like a hot press and I wouldn't really call it like a very rough um, cold press, sort of almost uh, in between, which is kind of the type of uh, paper I most enjoy working with, just because then you can use felt tip pens on it very well. I feel like alcohol markers work a little bit better on it as well. I mean, it is Ohuhu itself and they do like, um, have a lot of markers so it, it feels good that you can kind of use it with all kinds of different media and it truly does feel like a proper mixed media paper 
I suppose it would be nicer if it was a bit heavier weight and maybe just then reduce a little bit of the amount of pages that you do have because there, there's a lot. I, I don't even know how many but it's it's a chonky beast. So when I do my uh, sketchbook tour I guess I'll just have a little review uh, fully. I just felt like adding it in here as well if anybody was interested and you can definitely layer up a lot. I'm not very confident again with adding too many layers to my watercolor pieces sometimes just because I'm afraid I'll ruin it uh, especially when it's mixed media paper because you you don't know what exactly the limits are and I kind of was really enjoying the way this looked so I didn't really want to wreck it but I was trying to push uh, as best as I could to have a nice contrast but I didn't want it to be extreme either maybe that's kind of why I abandoned any semblance of um, focusing too much on like exact shadows or any intense ones I just wanted to be glowy warm and cozy kind of look I also knew I wanted to add some steam coming from the pot and pan, so I just bought um, a Posca brush pen to try out. It actually took me some time to get it working as I've never bought any kind of acrylic brush pen marker and I think I cut most of that footage out as it was a struggle to get it initially going. But once I did, I'd say it didn't do a bad job. I like that I can control the width versus just like the, the other nib one that I have. I, it's not a faulted one, but the, I guess like more metal kind of nib. I forget what the exact name of that one is. Uh, the lady at the art store had a sample brush pen to try out and uh, I did and I kind of enjoyed the way that one worked. And said so some people aren't fond of the brush pen itself because you can't get the, the nib to quite go into a very fine point but I think it's maybe due to it being a bit thicker medium than say watercolor so you would have to apply a bit more pressure to get to lay down the, the color. Um, just my thoughts on that anyhow. So, if you stuck with the video this long, thanks! I hope it inspired you to make some art of your own. Uh, this was actually a really fun piece to do from start to finish. Um, thanks for watching!